casting down vain imaginations. Some people may use the term spiritual warfare, but I'd like to use the actual scriptural terms. What does it mean to cast down vain imaginations? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4, 5, and 6, the Apostle Paul writes, and I read, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not earthly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now that last verse, verse 6, might sound difficult at first read, but we'll come back to that shortly. Most Christians are very familiar with verses 4 and 5 of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's now look at verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not earthly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are the mightiest weapons in the arsenal of a child of God? I submit they are praise and worship and prayer. We are in no way minimizing the word of God, reading and studying and imbibing and dwelling and meditating on the word of God. But praise and worship of holy God and prayer to him. I submit that these are our mightiest weapons during the uh, main time of the lockdown, uh, COVID-19 lockdown, something the Holy Spirit showed me as I would do my workout three times a day. In the morning, the first session during my workout, so graciously the Holy Spirit impressed upon me. I can't even say, he doesn't tell you what, you know, don't do this, don't do that. He just graciously leads you. And the impression on my heart was like, son, just spend your morning time worshiping and praising the Father. And you know how easy it is? We Christians, by default, so quick we want to ask for this and ask for that and lift up so and so and lift up such and such a situation uh, and looking for answers to prayer. But the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart, my son, just worship the Father. In other words, forget about yourself, Andrew. And you put your name in there. Forget about yourself. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God the Father. It's all about the Holy Spirit. Worship God. Begin the day. This is our mightiest, greatest weapon. Praise and worship of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Spirit showed me during the lockdown. Just focus on God and God alone. Nothing else. I don't mean they're, they don't matter, they're irrelevant, but nothing else comes close. All else pales into insignificance. And I found it to be like a spiritual chiropractic adjustment to start my day with. Because then everything else comes into alignment. Listen to this statement. When God brings you into alignment, you can then fulfill your assignment. I love it, don't you? When God brings you and I into spiritual alignment, that's by praising and worshiping him first thing in the morning, you can then fulfill your assignment, the tasks for the day, all that he has set before you. Verse 5, we are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 
So where do these imaginations, these wild, crazy thoughts come from? When we do not fill our hearts, mind and soul with him, then the world and the flesh rush in to take that place. And the flesh includes trying to do things in our own strength. So how do we effectively cast down these imaginations and thoughts? By filling ourselves with him. First thing every morning. Praise and worship God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. That way we literally give no place to the devil. Can I have an amen to that? And by the way, these high things, these vain imaginations we are told to cast down, they are contrasted to Almighty God. They are nothing. Because he is our everything. He is our all in all. So fill yourselves up with God, dear friend, by praising and worshiping the Father first thing in the day. And you will have no place for the enemy, for wild and vain imaginations. They will be cast down in Jesus' name. Now we come to verse 6, which was a difficult read at first. So let me read that. The Paul, Apostle Paul writes to the believers in the church in Corinth, which it was quite a messed up church. He says, And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Paul has been describing a spiritual battle or war between him and his co-workers, his faithful Christian co-workers, for Christ on the one hand, against false teachers who are insidiously working among the believers in the church of Corinth. Remember this, the foxes are in the vineyard, not outside the vineyard. And so he's, Paul is frustrated. He wants to bring correction uh, because he's got himself and the faithful workers of Christ on the one hand who are fighting the spiritual battle against the false teachers were working in and among the believers in the church at Corinth. So he says, First, I desire that those among you who have been led astray, as you read my epistle, that you would show yourselves to be teachable and receive correction and come out from that false teaching and influence and come into obedience. Now let's look at verse 6 again having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So first, if you take part B of that verse, Paul saying, I want as many of you to come back into the truth, into life, the life of God, into obedience. Now the first half, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. So then he says, once those of you who've turned back to the truth, turned from the error of these false teachers and false teaching, then punishment or discipline will be meted out to these false teachers and their followers who refuse to come into obedience. And that punishment or discipline could either include excommunication of those who resisted the true gospel of God, and you can read more about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Or it could mean some other form of spiritual discipline against those who were formerly in Christ, who have now chosen to live a life of rebellion against the true gospel of God. So to wind this up, let us shape up so we don't need to ship out. There's an expression, shape up or ship out. As children of God, let's come away from error and walk in the truth. God bless you.